Greetings, and welcome to Music and Beyond Presents. I'm Julian Armour, the Artistic Director of Music and Beyond. Today's episode celebrates the links between music and magic. Let's face it, music is all about magic. It doesn't matter what style of music you like, when you hear music that really moves you, something magical happens. This is why as long as there have been human beings, there has always been music. For this episode, we explore the direct connection between music and magic. And we even have a real magician, the amazing Chris Pillsworth. Let's start off with one of the greatest works in all of classical music, Mozart's Overture to the Magic Flute.
You may have noticed that we added a saxophone to this arrangement, something that looks ahead to the magic we will enjoy in this episode. The dapper and debonair Hollywood composer Henry Mancini composed a large number of scores for a wide range of films, and his music always made these films much better than they actually were. Now it is my great pleasure to invite magician Chris Pillsworth to perform a remarkable feat of magic, all choreographed to Mancini's Theme to the Pink Panther, arranged by Ottawa's Victor Elbier. Glenn Stewart Morley was a Canadian cellist, composer, and arranger. I first met him when I was a teenager. Glenn had just moved to Ottawa and was moving into a new phase of his retirement. He was focusing on composing, arranging, and publishing. It was at this time that he created this gorgeous arrangement of the Richard Rogers song, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered. Truly magical.
And now, a trip to Hogwarts. If you've heard of Harry Potter, and judging by your reactions, I think you have, I'm pretty excited because this package just arrived today from Hogwarts. <laughs> If you would like to watch any of this again, please go to Music and Beyond's YouTube channel. You can find it by visiting www.musicandbeyond.ca. And now, a very fun musical and magical tour of the world. Chris Pillsworth is your guide. Hands up if you've heard of the Secret Magician Society. Okay, that's good, it's a secret. In the world of magic, you know you've arrived when you're accepted into the Secret Magician's Society. And to do so, I had to pass a very difficult magician's test. In my test, my teacher picked a playing card from a deck of cards and left. One week later, he returned after having hidden the card somewhere in the world. This evening, we will reenact this test. Everyone, give me an ooh. That's it. I'll need someone to play the part of my teacher, my evaluator. Maybe we could have uh, this man on the edge. You can stay right there. Stay right there. What's your name? Alejandro. You speak Spanish. I don't. <laughs> but I'm working on it. Alejandro, you will be my teacher. You will select a card. We'll be using these cards so you can stay right where you are. These are unique cards. And that is why you will notice two unusual things about these cards. The first thing that you will notice is I'm not playing with a full, not all the cards are here. The second thing that you'll notice, they create the illusion that everyone in the church has shrunk. 
Alejandro, you will, I will take one card from the top, I'll place it at the bottom, and at any moment, Alejandro will call out stop. And when he does so, that will be the chosen card. We've begun. Okay. <laughs> take your time. I'm paid by the hour. I'm not paid by the hour. <laughs> Alejandro, you call out stop sometime. Okay, you have two choices ahead of you, Alejandro. This card or this card. Which would you prefer, this card or this card? That would be this one. Alejandro, I now want you to take this card to come forward. I would like you to hide the card somewhere in the world. <laughs> we will reconvene in one week when Alejandro returns. <laughs> Just keep it with you, we'll skip that part. I was given a series of clues to help me find the card. Hands up if you know what a clue is. Yep, hands up if you don't have a clue. <laughs> oh, it's almost evil. <laughs> the clues were on this pad of paper, conveniently labeled Claeza. Clues, stay in school. <laughs> the journey began, as all journeys do with a single step. I traveled to London, England. When I arrived, I made my way towards Buckingham Palace. <laughs> when I got close, I peeked over the palace wall, and it was there that I spotted my first clue. Bart Simpson and Marge. <laughs> Not really, it was the Queen and her bodyguard with his bearskin hat. He told me that I should be traveling to Mexico City. <laughs> when I arrived in Mexico City, I checked into my hotel. From my fourth floor balcony, I looked down to the street, and it was there that I spotted my next clue. A Mexican. <laughs> wearing a sombrero, riding a bicycle. <laughs> Give it time. He told me that I should be traveling to Shanghai, China. I said, do I go by air or do I go by sea? He replied in Spanish. He said, "Si." <laughs> no charge for that joke. <laughs> I took a boat to China. When I arrived in Shanghai, I made my way towards the Shanghai Zoo. In English, Shanghai Zoo. I'll be sending the jokes out individually from this point on. <laughs> At the zoo, I spotted my next clue. It was a panda giving a tree a hug. <laughs> Ni hao. On the opposite side of the tree trunk, the panda had carved a message in the trunk. The message said, Egypt, land of the pharaohs, give me a new. I flew to Egypt. When I arrived, I made my way off into the desert. And off in the distance, I spotted my next clue. A pyramid. A flat one. Alejandro had failed to complete the clue, but I'd come prepared. I'd brought with me a marker, a magic marker. I completed the clue, a pyramid, a small one. But as I walked closer towards the pyramid, it appeared to get bigger. They don't actually get bigger. It's as you get closer, they seem to get bigger. And then, I thought I spotted some strange hieroglyphic markings. I thought, could this be a sign? 
But when I looked more closely, I realized, no, it wasn't a sign. It was a playing card. Oh, yeah. I retrieved the card stylishly. Stylishly. Oh, yeah. I agreed to exchange cards with my evaluator. We agreed to meet halfway. He got up off his pew to meet me halfway. We were walking slowly through the desert. We were hot and thirsty. We would go for a drink later on. Un cerveza, por favor. That's Spanish for a beer, please. He returned back to his seat. I verified that it was indeed the card. And that, ladies and gentlemen, girls, and boys is how I became a member of the Secret Magicians <laughs> Society. We've got some great music, we've got some great magic. The first piece of magic that I'm going to show you, I wanted to give you a few clues. First clue is this. Not this. Thank you for watching Music and Beyond Presents. I hope you have enjoyed today's venture into magic. If you would like to see these performances again, or if you would like to enjoy more of our videos, please visit our YouTube channel, which you can connect to at musicandbeyond.ca.